Welcome everyone to Lockport Township Park District World War II days. Maybe someday. A few announcements before we, a uh, little uh, brief history about our event here. This is our third year uh, doing the World War II reenactment. We started a couple years ago with 67 reenactors. We're now over 300 reenactors uh, that come out and volunteer the entire weekend, supply the, their own ammo and entertaining your folks here for uh, this, this whole afternoon. We are now the, uh, the second largest reenactment in Illinois. We are the only reenactment this side that is free to spectators. We do not charge an admission, so we do have suggested donations at the door when you leave the battle today. If you can please support that, that's what continues this event. A special thanks to our sponsors. Uh, BMO, BMO Harris Bank is our park partner uh, that helps us put on this event, as well as other special events at the Park District throughout the year. Uh, Hanson Material Service donates all the pyrotechnics uh, this weekend uh, for all the battles. Um, ha uh, Homer Tree Company supplies, transports all of the tanks that, that, that you see here this weekend as well. So we can't do that without all these sponsors. So I'd like to thank all of our sponsors that help us out with the event. In past years, we would let uh, some of the, uh, the kids go out after the battlefield to pick up some of the shell casings. We can no longer do that because of safety reasons. So please do not let the kids go on the battlefield after the battle. You'll have to exit the same way that you guys came in. We will be doing battlefield tours throughout the weekend. Uh, the trench, the trenches, uh, there's a German unit with this trench. Point of, the, uh, ...of the invasion. One of those uh, operations involved the creation of an entire dummy army. Wooden and, rubber, wooden and inflatable tanks, craft, empty barracks to make it appear as though there was an army in the, in the area directly across from Pas de Calais that was allegedly under the command of General Patton. And it was all a sham but it was very successful and it, it continued to lead the Germans to believe that Pas de Calais was going to be the point at which the invasion would occur. Uh, at the time of the invasion, June 6, Rommel, wasn't, uh, who was the coastal commander, wasn't present in France. He was back in Germany with his wife celebrating her birthday. Uh, he had advocated for a defense in which the uh, Panzers, the tanks, would be near the coastline because he feared that Allied air superiority would hamper, uh, would hamper their ability to move about the battlefield and go to where they were needed. He thought they should be close to the beachhead. His uh, co-commander behind the front uh, of the coastline was von Geyer. Von Geyer believed that there should be one mobile re Panzer reserve force and that that should be kept back in the area of Rouen and Paris. And then once the invasion main thrust was pinpointed that they should be moved there then. Uh, they took their dispute to their boss, who was von Rundstedt, who was the field marshal in command of all Western operations. He took it to Adolf Hitler, who made the decision that the Panzer Reserve was going to be kept back away from the beaches and could only be moved on his command. Uh, you may have heard in, in history books or through movies that
Try to hit. trail of the long way up there. Here comes another one that's going to come in low.